वेलकम टू द स्पेशल एडिशन ऑफ क्वेश्चन आर फ्रॉम विद इन द पार्लियामेंट हाउस कॉम्प्लेक्स इन द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आर विल ब्रिंग टू यू सम इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच है बिन आस्ट इन द प्रीवियस सेशन एंड देर आंसर्स गिवन बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑन द फ्लोर ऑफ द हाउस आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड विद मी इज माई कलीग कृति मिश्रा थैंक यू सो मच विशाल सो लेट्स बिगिन विद द क्वेश्चन आर शो एंड द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन दैट विज पिकड अप इज फ्रॉम मेम्बर रवि प्रकाश वर्मा एंड दिस इज वन ऑफ द अनस्टार्ट क्वेश्चन एंड रवि प्रकाश वर्मा हैज आस्ट अबाउट द डिटेल्स ऑफ द इंक्लूजन or incursions by Myanmar army in the Indian territory particularly in Manipur well this one has been answered by the mos vk singh who says uh, no there have been no instances of intrusions or incursions by the myanmar army in indian territory india and myanmar discuss routine border management and security issues through institutionalized mechanisms such as foreign office consultations national level meetings regional border committee meetings sectoral level meetings and india myanmar post level meetings Next one is from Shambhaji Chhatrapati who goes on to ask the government whether any progress has been made to develop tie up with US Japan and Australia for building some kind of security architecture in the Indo Pacific region The answer has been given by MOS VK Singh and he goes on to say that Prime Minister enunciated India's vision for the Indo Pacific region during his keynote address at the Shangri-La dialogue in Singapore on 1st of June 2018 The vision stands for a free, open, inclusive region which embraces all in a common pursuit of progress and prosperity. It includes all nations in this geography as also other nations beyond the region who have a stake in it. The vision entails involving a common rules-based order for promoting common prosperity and security through dialogue. India is engaged with all key partners in the region and beyond to ensure peace, stability and security. in the indo pacific region so certainly a very important answer given by the government here well, and moving on the next question has been asked by member sanjay seth and he asks whether the number of cases of rape and acid attack have increased in the country and also whether the government has created a special fund to provide legal assistance to such victims well this one has been answered by the minister virendra kumar who goes on to say that as for the data of the national Crime Records Bureau that is NCRB a total number of 34651 cases in 2015 and 38947 cases in 2016 were reported under rape that is section 376 of the IPC a total number of 140 and 160 cases have been registered under acid attacks section 326A of IPC during 2015 and 2016 respectively Further, total numbers of 30 and 46 cases have been registered under attempt to acid attack women with acid attack on women, Section 326B of IPC during 2015 and 2016. The schemes of One Stop Centre and Women Helpline for women affected by violence, including rape and acid attack, funded from Nirbhaya Fund to facilitate access to justice. are being implemented since 1st of April 2015. Further, the Ministry of Women and Child Development is also administering. Sudhar Grah scheme for relief and rehabilitation of women in difficult circumstances including the victims of rape Moving on to some of the oral questions and this one has been asked by member Om Prakash Mathur and he's asked when would toll plazas on national highways would have fully functional fast tag lanes Abhi bhi jo fast tag wala track hai nahi tag wala usme private gaadiyan cash payment karne wali gaadiyan please shanti और ट्रक तक घुस जाते हैं तो जिस व्यक्ति ने एडवांस पैसा दिया फास्ट टैग का और जो फास्ट टैग का ऑलरेडी कार धारक है उसको वहाँ घंटों रुकना पड़ता है और कई बार तो इतना जाम हो जाता है well this one has been answered by uh, the minister concerned nitin gadkari who goes on to tell the house that the government uh, is working to ensure that all toll plazas to have operational fast tag lanes by the end of the current financial year let's listen in to the full answer 100% toll plaza jo hai वो छः महीने के अंदर पूरी तरह फास्ट ट्रैक पर ले जाएंगे इसमें से काफ़ी प्रमाण में भी किया गया है और एक बात ये अच्छी हुई है कि दिसंबर के बाद आप कोई भी नई गाड़ी खरीदी करेंगे तो उसको रेडीमेड फास्ट ट्रैक लग के आएगा और मुझे ये बहुत यानी बहुत ज़्यादा काम हुआ ऐसा नहीं है पर छः सिक्स पॉइंट बत्तीस लाख अगस्त सत्रह में फास्ट ट्रैक बेचे गए थे अब ये ट्वेंटी लाख हुए हैं राइट right. पर इसके साथ साथ हम ये करेंगे कि इसको पूरी तरह 100 परसेंट करेंगे और छः महीने के अंदर सिमलेस ट्रैफिक होगा इन अनादर सप्लीमेंट्री क्वेश्चन मेंबर माथुर एक्सप्रेस कंसर्न ओवर इनकन्वीनियंस फेस बाय एम 
at these toll barriers. Listen it. सांसदों को हमको अपने क्षेत्र की गाड़ियों के लिए दो टैग और दे रखे हैं कार्ड. लेकिन उसकी समुचित व्यवस्था ना होने से जब उनके परिवार का लोग या कोई भी गाड़ी लेके निकलता है तो उनके साथ बहुत बदतमीजी से होती है तो क्या इसकी कोई व्यवस्था की जाती है क्या क्योंकि आखिर वो हमको ऑफिशियल हमको ऑफिशियल वो टैग दिया गया फास्ट टैग का और जहाँ भी जाते हैं अब सांसद तो है नहीं सांसद तो यहाँ है लेकिन वहाँ जिस प्रकार से टोल प्लाजा पर उनके साथ बदतमीज होती है यहाँ तक कि महिलाएं भी होती है उनके साथ भी दुर्व्यवहार होता है The Minister Gadkari again informed the House that parliamentarians are provided with two cards which facilitate free vehicular movement in New Delhi and in their constituency. Once again, let's listen into the Minister. Member of Parliament को दो tag दिए गए हैं। एक है दिल्ली के लिए और एक उनके constituency के लिए है। और उनके constituency में जो उनकी गाड़ी है उसको लगा हुआ है। उसमें जो भी लोग बैठेंगे उनको free है, उनको कोई problem नहीं है। और ये जो बात अगर कह रहे हैं कि इसके बाद कभी-कभी ऐसा होता है। कि एमपीस के साथ पांच-छह गाड़ियां आती हैं साथ में तो वो इनके गाड़ी के लिए फ्री ऑफ चार्ज है बाकी गाड़ियों के लिए नहीं है। Well, another suggestion was given by member Vijla Satyanathan and she suggested that no toll should be charged as such and this step will be lauded by the people. Listen in to this suggestion. Will the minister take away or you remove? Will the minister remove in a face time all the toll plazas? Well, uh, the minister uh, said, uh, Kriti, that uh, it is not possible to do away with the toll system entirely as people have to pay for the services uh, they are given. Let's listen to the minister again. If you want good services, <laughs> you have to pay for it. Yes. Without toll, we cannot construct express highway and road. Yes. Just five days before, State Bank of India chairman gave me the check of 25,000 crore. Why is giving this money to us? Because our credibility is high. Our rating is triple A, and we have to earn. Uh, we have to take the money from the toll, and we have to construct the road. We don't op no, we don't have any option. Member Ravi Prakash Verma raised concern over contamination of water due to improper methods of fecal disposal. Listen in. बहुत बड़ी तादाद में सोक पिट बने हैं. सर अखबारों में रिपोर्ट आया है कि स्टेटा टू तक जो है वो कंटेमिनेट हो गया है. जो फेकल मैटर है, तो हैजा उस कॉलेरा का बैक्टीरिया है, डिप्थीरिया का है, हिपेटाइटिस का है, कोलाइटिस का है, और हैवी मेटल बहुत सारा ये स्टेटा टू तक पहुंच रहा है। इतने बड़े पैमाने पर सर ग्राउंड वाटर कंटेमिनेट हो रहा है, सर ये क्राइम है। सोक पिट की बजाय क्या सेप्टिक टैंक रिप्लेस करने पर वि� well, responding to this one, uh, the minister concerned uh, Narendra Singh Tomar informed the members that states are free to opt for better sanitary solution. In a reply to another question, Tomar informed the House that over 4 lakh villages have been declared open defecation free. Let's listen in to the detailed answer from the minister concerned. The twin put is that the situation in our country is very difficult and the government has changed the technique डॉक्टर मासेलकर जी की अध्यक्षता में एक समिति बनाई है यह समिति लगातार बैठती है विचार करती है और अपनी रिकमेंडेशन देती है अभी तक ट्विन पिट शौचालय का अनुभव अच्छा रहा है लेकिन राज्यों को यह सलाह दी गई है कि उसमें जो पथ्य और परहेज बरतना चाहिए जैसे कि उसकी जो गहराई है वो एक मीटर से अधिक नहीं होनी चाहिए पेयजल स्रोत है उससे दस मीटर की दूरी पर इस प्रकार के शौचालय बनाना चाहिए ये पद्धति एक तौर से सक्सेस भी है इस पर किसी प्रकार की दुर्गंध की गुंजाइश नहीं है भारत में स्वच्छ भारत अभियान के माध्यम से जो स्वच्छता का प्रतिशत कभी 38 हुआ करता था आज वो 89 प्रतिशत हो गया है इसके कारण लगभग तीन लाख बच्चे मृत्यु से बच सके हैं यह मैं सदस्य को अवगत कराना चाहता हूँ दूसरा सेफ्टी टैंक पर जाएँ बायोडाइवर्सिटी पर जाएं इसके लिए राज्य इकाइयां पूरी तरह स्वतंत्र हैं 4,129 ब्लॉक 1,80,945 ग्राम पंचायत और 4,9,442 गांव और 19 राज्य ये अपने आप को ओडीएफ घोषित कर चुके हैं टाइम फॉर अ शॉर्ट ब्रेक स्टे ट्यून टू राज्य सभा टेलीविजन वेलकम बैक Let's move on to the next question, which is from member Viplav Thakur, who goes on to ask the government whether it is providing financial assistance to rehabilitation centers for the welfare of differently abled persons in the country. MOS Krishnpal Gujar has given this answer and he goes on to say, the Department of Empowerment of Persons with Disabilities is implementing a central sector scheme 
called the Dayal Disabled Rehabilitation Scheme DDRS, under which grants and aid is provided to non-governmental organizations for running any of the prescribed model projects under the scheme relating to rehabilitation or empowerment of persons with disabilities. The district disability rehabilitation centers are set up in the approved district of the country for providing comprehensive rehabilitation services to persons with disabilities at the grassroots level under the plan scheme. Scheme for the implementation of the person with disabilities, equal opportunities, protection of rights and full participation act 1995. Moving on to the next question and this one has been asked by member Binoy Viswam and he asked whether it is a fact that foreign companies are gaining a foothold in the payment and loan segment in India through non-banking financial companies popularly known as NBFCs which are allowed 100% foreign ownership which could lead to easier access to financial data of crores of Indian. Well this one has been answered by the Minister of State in the Finance Ministry and he goes on to say that with a view to enhance safety and security for customers of NBFCs, RBI has issued master directions on information technology framework for NBFCs requiring them to have a board approved information security policy to control access to sensitive information and ensure that only legitimate users use the data and the same cannot be read or compromised without proper authorization. Such policy is required to be based on following tenets. Confidentially, for ensuring access to sensitive data to authorize users only. Integrity, for ensuring accuracy and reliability of information by ensuring that there is no modification without authorization. And availability, for ensuring that uninterrupted data is available to users when it is needed. And here's another important oral question and replying to a question raised by member Akhilesh Prasad Singh. Minister of State for Defence Subhash Bhamre apprised the members about the blacklisting policy for defence procurement. Listen in. Jin companies ko blacklist kiya jata hai, aur un companies ke dwara agar satru desh ko wahi saman becha jata ho, to uske liye sarkar ke paas koi review mechanism agar hai, to wo batane ki kipa kare. Defence Acquisition Council in its meeting on 7th November. 2016 decided to review existing cases of suspension, ban, blacklisting, etc. against the vendors in the lights of guidelines and the process of relevant decisions of the competent authority. Based on this decision of DAC, instruction to review the cases where the business dealings have been debarred, put on hold, or suspended, restricted in the lights of new guidelines has been issued. Well, another one from member Motilal Vora, who asked the minister concerned about the states which have high uranium content in groundwater in a supplementary. Member KTS also asked as to why only 5 to 15 percent of the funds allotted for drinking water were used since 2016. the the biggest looming crisis in the country is the drinking water. I don't have to stress that point. Investment, there is 54% of the country which faces high to extremely high levels of water stress. And 80% of the water that is supplied in the rural areas is unfit for human consumption Please, because what there is, is no question? pipe. My question is, is it correct that in 2016-17, only 5% of the allotted funds were used. And in the two preceding years, only 15% was, was used. MOS Water Resources Arjun Ram Meghbal listed the states and said that the government is committed to provide financial and technical assistance to states to improve water quality content. Listen it. Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Rajasthan, Maharashtra, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, West Bengal, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat. This water, drinking water, is a very important issue. We also know that the central government is providing technical and financial assistance to the government. This is a very important issue. This is a program that we call the National Rural Drinking Water Program. And we have also a submission to water quality. The National Water Quality Submission. In that, the government has asked the और जब जब राज्य मांग करते हैं हम सहायता उपलब्ध कराते हैं इन आदर सप्लीमेंट्री मेंबर एस आर बालासुब्रमण्यम सेड दैट यूरेनियम इज नॉट येट इंक्लूडेड इन द लिस्ट ऑफ कंटेनमेंट्स 
monitored under the Bureau of Indian Standards, drinking water specifications and steps taken by the government to contain uranium contaminants. 30 milligram micrograms of uranium per a, a level that is consistent with the US uh, environmental production sta standards. Despite this, uranium is not yet included in the list of contaminants monitored under the Bureau of Indian Standards uh, drinking water speculations. What I want to know is the indiscriminate uh, extraction of water, ground level water, is the main reason for the uh, uh, this uranium content coming. What is your question then? What, what, is, the, what is the what are the steps to, uh, the government proposes to yes. take the, uh, to contain the uranium content and right. the, the indiscriminate the, the extraction of water? Let's listen in to the detailed answer given by Minister Nekwal. मान्य सदस्य जी को बताना चाहता हूं कि यह बात सही है कि जो हमारी आईएएस गाइडलाइंस है उसमें जो ड्रिंकिंग वाटर है उसमें यह पैरामीटर नहीं है यू आर राइट ऑन लेकिन जो और एक्सप्लोइटेड होता है उसके हम ब्लॉक जो है वो और एक्सप्लोइटेड आइडेंटिफाई करते हैं हमारी उसमें योजनाएं हैं हम जांच भी करते हैं अटल भूजल योजना है वो सात राज्यों में हम लागू करने वाले हैं और गवर्नमेंट इज कमिटेड कि हम यहां के नागरिकों को शुद्ध पानी पिलाएं in response to one more supplementary uh, from another member, Saroj Pandey, Water Resources Minister Nitin Gadkari told the House that the government is trying to formalize five river linking projects by the end of this year. Kendra Sarkar ki dwara desh ke anne rajyo ki nadiyo ko aapas mein jodne ki kya koi yoshna banai gai hai? Usme tis prakalpa identify huye hai. Aur is prakalpa se jo pahle paas prakalpa hai jiska ullek manne mantri ji ne kiya hai. O isi saal December tak shuru karne ka amara prayas hai. पर ये प्रकल्प करते समय गुजरात और महाराष्ट्र के बीच में दो प्रकल्प हैं तापीर नाम नर्मदा और दमनगंगा और पिंजर वहाँ कुछ यूनानिमिटी बनने तक आई है जल्दी उस पर साइन होगा इसी सत्र में ये करने का विचार था पर ये क्लियर होगा दूसरा जो केन बेतवा का बुंदेलखंड का प्रकल्प है जो उत्तर प्रदेश और मध्य प्रदेश से जुड़ा हुआ है उसके बारे में सहमति हो गई है उसका साइनिंग अभी इसी समय पार्लियामेंट सेशन के बाद होगा और ये दो प्रक, पांच प्रकल्प जो उसमें सबसे महत्वपूर्ण है गोदावरी का जो गोदावरी पर पोलावरम डैम बन रहा है वो करीब साठ हज़ार करोड़ उसके अभी अनुमानित कीमत है उसका जो बैक वाटर है वो गोदावरी का पानी कृष्णा में कृष्णा का पेनार में और पेनार का कावेरी में जब कर्नाटक और तमिलनाडु में झगड़ा चालीस टी के लिए है और तीन हज़ार पानी जो है वो समुद्र में बह रहा है तो ये भी बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है सभी प्रकल्प लिए हैं कोशिश कर रहे कि इस साल ही मार्च के पहले ये पांचों प्रकल्प का काम शुरू हो मीन वाइल मेम्बर ए विजय कुमार तमिलनाडु कबड्डी एसोसिएशन एंड अदर स्टेट एसोसिएशन रैमबेट करप्शन एंड बोगस मेंबरशिप इन ऑल स्पोर्ट्स फेडरेशन विल दी माई क्वेश्चन इज विल द गवर्नमेंट टेक स्टेप्स टू एनरोल स्पोर्ट्स मेंबर्स ऑनलाइन इन Centralized manner. Well, the minister concerned, Rajyavardhan Singh Rathore, informed the house that while sports is a state subject, and urged the state federations to ensure free and transparent selection process in all the sports. Discrepancy, malfunction, inefficiency in terms of the state uh, units of respective sports federations, and the state government must make the law there. However. We are certainly responsible, and it is an important subject. And for that, I, I thank the honourable member. Uh, when teams play for India and they play with the Indian flag, the respect and prestige of the entire country is at stake, and therefore the federations must ensure free and transparent uh, selection process. The Delhi High Court has uh, directed that the selection process be uh, be overseen by Sports Authority of India. After the team comes back from the Asian Games, we will certainly look into it. Another supplementary was asked by member Shantanu Sain and he has asked if the government is taking any steps to re-establish de-recognized sports federations. Listen in. As we know that there are many de-recognized sports federations in the country under this government. My humble question before our Honourable Minister is whether our government is taking any steps to re-establish those de-recognized sports federations and if so, what are the steps? Thank right. you. Well, the Minister for Sports, Sarajavadhan Nathar, again said that recognition can be granted if the federations follow correct procedures and rules. Sports federations that have been de-recognized have uh, been de-recognized because of certain uh, lacunas in their, uh, in their functioning. Uh, we are also, along with the IOA, we try and ensure that those federations um, overcome those uh, issues 
and then uh, hold the proper elections. And once those elections are held and they apply for recognition by us, we grant them the concert recognition. Right. Member Anil Desai asked the government about measures being taken to maintain a healthy balance between the green cover, eco-sensitive zones, which are getting affected due to rapid urbanization of villages. Take a listen. What specific measures are being taken by the government to have a balance between the green cover, eco-sensitive zones and the rapid development which is coming on the other side so Minister. that, I mean, it is preserved and the pollution levels okay. are sustained. Well, the Environment Minister Harsh Vadan responded to this uh, by informing the House that the country's forest cover has increased by over 7,000 square kilometres. Let's listen in to the detailed response. Sir, we have a very uh, ambitious programme which involves uh, multiple stakeholders and I think I have to inform the House that in the last uh, two years okay, itself, no, no, no. as per the uh, latest uh, forest report, we have increased yeah. our forest cover in this country by over 7,000 square kilometres. That's, I think, uh, uh, the uh, uh, most important thing. Moreover, to ensure that uh, uh, we handle this issue, the multiple ministries are involved. Uh, whether it is the Agriculture Ministry, whether it is the Ministry of Surface Transport or whether it is the Ministry right. of uh, uh, Clean Energy. Uh, through every ministry, we are giving strong inputs like for agriculture. There is a program whereby almost uh, 1100 uh, 1, crores are being given to farmers uh, 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 in uh, states of Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and in Punjab uh, so that we give them farm implements at subsidized rates. So these were the important questions and answers that we had for you in this edition of Question Hour. We'll get back to you with more questions and the answers in the subsequent editions. Till then, keep watching Rajya Sabha Television.